Ladies and gentlemen, hello again. Welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. My name is Graham. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to look at something that I uh, found quite challenging when I started flying simulators, and that's how to plan the descent to, to keep the aircraft on a, a straightforward profile to approach the runway and land. I mentioned it quite briefly when we looked at the uh, circling arrival into Pisa with the IXEG 737 uh, and also when we did the ILS arrivals as well. I thought it's worth looking at it in just a little bit more detail. So without further ado, let's have a look at the uh, descent planning rules of thumb. I have to apologise, the video will make the use of a little bit of trigonometry. Uh, I, it's uh, not ideal, but uh, we'll try and find that uh, a rule of thumb that works so we don't have to do too much calculation. So let's begin. We're looking at a three degree glide slope. This would be the three degree profile coming down here. Uh, it's not to scale, obviously. This is the horizontal element. This could be speed or distance and speed or distance on the vertical element here. Let's use an example of a 60 knot ground speed. That would be an appropriate ground speed for a Cessna 172 for example. 60 knots is a good one to use because it is one nautical mile per minute or in other words 6,000 feet per minute. Feet per minute on this scale becomes feet per minute in this scale and this is where the dreaded trigonometry comes in. I'm not going to go through it here. Uh, it's really quite straightforward uh, if you've done any high school maths whatsoever but the answer is 318 feet. Uh, 6,000 feet per minute down here 318 feet per minute up here. I'm not good enough to fly 318 feet per minute exactly, so if I can't do that exactly, then let's just use 333 feet per minute instead. That'll make sense in just a little second. All it does is increase the slope that little bit. It won't really matter for what we're doing with here because it's a, a big picture kind of thing today. Being a right angle triangle, it scales quite nicely. So if I go from 60 knots to 180 knots for a ground speed, that would be a good uh, initial approach speed for a 737. Then rather than the uh, 333, it becomes 999 or more or less 1000 feet per minute. 180 knots, 1000 feet per minute. So if I'm covering 1000 feet per minute vertically, I, I should also be covering three nautical miles horizontally in that same minute at 180 knots. So I can take those that minute there, that minute there, cancel them out. For every 1000 feet vertically I need three nautical miles horizontally. So that means it's quite straightforward to work out. I don't want to have to do trigonometry in the flight deck because that would just be a little bit ridiculous. So what I need is a rule of thumb and this is the key point of this video. Let's take that 180 knots ground speed up here I'm going to drop the last zero off to become 18. I'm going to divide that in half to become 9. That gives me 900 feet per minute. Add on another 10%, that gives me 990, which is close enough to the 1000 feet per minute that we wanted. So if it works for 180 knots, let's try it for 140 knots. 140 knots would be a good final approach speed for the 737, or maybe an initial approach speed in a, a light piston twin. So we'll drop the last zero, it becomes 14. I'll divide it in half, it becomes seven or 700 feet per minute. Add on 10% and the result is 770 feet per minute. And if you remember on the PISA video, I mentioned uh, seven to 800 feet per minute and around about 140 knots. I think it was 150 knots and about 800 feet per minute. So you can see that rule of thumb works quite well for a three degree glide slope. It's basically half the ground speed. Ground speed is the horizontal element, half the ground speed for the vertical element. Uh, you can get the ground speed from your uh, GPS, maybe from a, a standalone DME system. Your IRs might have it. Uh, use your true air speed, subtract the headwind, or if you're flying a 172, just guess. About 60 knots ground speed would be a, a reasonable guess for most um, light aircraft landing into wind, and that would be uh, quite straightforward to work it out from there. When I say half ground speed, please bear in mind that there's uh, zeros involved. Uh, if it's uh, 300, then it would not be 150, it would be 1,500. So add a zero on there afterwards or add a zero on there before you do the division. Either way, it doesn't matter. However you're happy with it. And the good thing about this is it scales out quite nicely. So 1,000 feet, 3 nautical miles. 10,000 feet, 30 nautical miles. 
Uh, just keep in mind a figure of, uh, let's half that, 5,000 feet and 15. Just uh, keep that at the back of your minds there. Also up to 30,000 feet and 90 nautical miles. The trap here, however, is I'd be starting off the descent in a, in a jet airliner doing a ground speed of probably around 450 to 500 knots. Um, I can't land uh, at 500 knots. I certainly can't land even at 250 knots, which would be the feet, uh, speed I'd be using at 10,000 feet. I need to really slow down. And what I can't do is fly that three degree profile and slow down, because even at 250 knots ground speed, I'm going to be doing 1,400 feet per minute. The aircraft's going to be an idle thrust, and there's no extra way to slow down. I could use the speed brakes, but to be honest, it probably still wouldn't help on that profile. So what I need to do is uh, include in my calculations a little bit of a shallower segment to let me slow down. Let's say that uh, over a thousand feet, rather than using three miles, I'll allow five miles. That's a different profile. That's a much shallower profile. So if I'm doing a thousand feet per minute, I'd be flying at a 300 knot ground speed to fly that profile. The profile works out to be about 1.9 degrees, and it's really quite straightforward to work out. Take my ground speed, 300, divide it by 3, it becomes 100, and add the extra zero on here, or if you prefer, add the zero on here before you do the division. Really quite easy. And just to make it live, using that uh, one third or divide by 3, 240 knot ground speed, I'll need 800 feet per minute. 800 feet per minute is adequate. The speed brakes would help me slow down if necessary. The aircraft might slow down by itself, depending on the particular type at that point. So we're looking for a profile like this. I don't want to drag the aircraft uh, in on a much shallower approach all the way back from top of climb. So let's fly a three degree profile initially allow a little bit shallower to slow down and then the final approach uh, track here. There's the final approach, 9 nautical miles, 3,000 feet. That'll make sense, that's that 3.1 degrees. If you want to call it 10 miles to allow for the little uh, fudge we put in there, that's fine. And then the shallower segment here, 10 nautical miles, 2,000 feet. That gives us a really nice gate to aim for, 20 nautical miles, 5,000 feet. You remember uh, I said keep the figure of um, 15 nautical miles and 5,000 feet in your mind? Well, there's that extra 5 miles to help us slow down. Dead straightforward. To come down from the cruise to get to this point here, it's just that uh, 3 miles per every 1,000 feet calculation that we did before. What's vitally important is that if we're high for whatever reason, maybe air traffic keep us high, uh, maybe there's crossing aircraft below, um, maybe there's airspace issues, I want to get back on profile as quickly as I can. I don't want to fly high all the way down the profile, fly high all the way down here and then fly down the ILS trying to catch up. That just won't work. I want to get onto the profile quickly and then fly the profile. How do we get back onto profile? Well, as luck would have it, it's really straightforward. There's three things we can do. Easiest one is to increase speed. If I'm descending at 280 knots indicated, if I increase that to 320, it's going to increase the drag on the aircraft, drag being a, a function of the speed. It's also, if I'm keeping it at idle thrust, I'll fly a higher vertical speed, but critically a steeper path as well, a steeper flight path angle. If I increase the speed, however, I need to make space to lose it again. That uh, 20 mile, 5,000 feet gate might not work uh, quite as well if I'm doing 330 knots as if I was doing 250 knots. So if you're going to increase the speed, make sure you get under the profile so you can bring the speed back to the uh, nominal speed again. If I can't increase the speed, if I've got an air traffic speed restriction, then I've got the speed brakes. That's what they're there for. You can use the speed brakes to increase your vertical speed at a fixed airspeed, or you can use it to uh, increase the deceleration rate in level flight. If you don't have speed brakes, maybe your aircraft's got spoilers or air brakes, they're pretty much the same thing. The terminology really just uh, varies uh, depending on where the aircraft was built. Some of the old piston prop liners, they didn't have uh, any form of uh, aerodynamic brake at all, but they did have the landing gear. You can use the landing gear, it creates an awful lot of drag, but uh, just remember it's a one-way trip for the landing gear. If you're going to put it down to use it as drag, you generally wouldn't bring it back up again. So 
people might frown on all that extra drag at 25,000 feet or 20,000 feet with the gear. If that's not an option for you, you need more miles. It's as simple as that. You either need to arrange your uh, flight path that you have more track miles. If you're flying by yourself, you're vectoring yourself. If you're flying with an air traffic controller, just ask them. It's as simple as that. Air traffic controllers, they've got a radar screen and they can see the profile all the other aircraft are flying. If you're a couple of thousand feet high, they will see it and they probably will expect that uh, request for extra track miles. So just to recap, we're flying a, a steeper descent from the uh, cruise, down to this target point here, 5,000 feet above the field, 20 nautical miles. And uh, we're going to shallow off the rate of descent, slow the aircraft down so we've got the gear and flaps available, and then fly down the final approach track. Remember somewhere in here you need to slow down from uh, your descent speed to around 280 to 300 knots, back to 250 uh, to make the uh, 10,000 feet restriction. But for the most part, that's that's achievable. With a higher speed, you've got more drag as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found that interesting. It's not the uh, usual sort of video I would do. Um, I don't know if I'd do many uh, ground school kind of videos because it is just me talking and you looking at uh, screens on the computer. But that being said, if you do have any questions or comments on it, I'd be very happy to see it. Or if you'd like to see any other uh, subjects like this, um, please let me know and I'll do my best. I hope you found it interesting uh, and hopefully more than anything else it'll make your sim flying a little bit more satisfying when you nail that uh, idle thrust from top of descent all the way to the ILS. Thanks very much for listening to me. I'll speak to you again shortly.